What is going on everybody? If you're clicking on this video, you're most likely trying to find the guys that will win you leagues off the waiver wire without all the BS and that is exactly what I'm going to give to you in this video. So if you guys are new, make sure to be subscribed. It only takes one second so you don't miss more videos like this and pretty much every other video I post every day. But you guys know me, I absolutely hate to waste people's time in any of these videos. So let's get right into it with the very first player we need to be adding off the waiver wire for week six. And that is Roshan Johnson and possibly Dante Foreman, but I'll get into that as well. Now, as we know, Khalil Herbert did exit their game in week five with an injury, which so happened to be a high angle sprain. And we all know how tough those are to come back from. We've seen it time and time again. It's one of the more aggravating injuries you can get. But at the same time, Roshan Johnson did suffer a concussion in that game as well. He could be out anywhere from one to two weeks or maybe not even any time at all. But either way, if Herbert's going to miss a significant amount of time or even one or two weeks, Roshan Johnson is the guy we want to be grabbing off the waivers in week one. He saw a majority of the third down snap a majority of the two minute drills and all of the receiving work he's been increasing his snaps week by week and getting a little bit more involved but he's kind of been falling back into that rb2 role recently but if Khalil herbert's gonna be out he's the rb1 or rb2 depending on if he's healthy now if we're looking in between the two foreman and roshan let's say they're both healthy roshan is a better pass catcher he's also a way better blocker but foreman will probably get the bulk of the carries on the ground and at the same time foreman has not seen the field since week one and he's gonna go exactly back to that non-existent role once Khalil herbert comes back it's not a season ending injury so Roshan is the guy we want to be getting for the long term but there's also a real shot that Roshan and Khalil Herbert are both missing this next week and that would make Dante Foreman a top running back you need to add usually teams will keep their third or fourth string running back active for special teams purposes but Dante Foreman hasn't been getting involved in any of it so if you need a short-term plug and play go with Dante Foreman but moving on to the number one wide receiver we need to be grabbing off the waiver wire is KJ Osborne this could be a real big play Justin Jefferson as we know left week five with an injury as of right now it's classified as a hamstring injury we don't know how serious it's going to end up being at least at the time of this recording but we do know that hamstring injuries have absolutely destroyed wide receivers in the past and they're really a nagging injury to come back from but if he were to miss at least a couple weeks or a significant amount of time kj osborne and jordan addison are going to be the wide receiver one and two in this offense that is already extremely pass heavy and that's not going to change just because there's no justin jefferson this is the identity of the team and at the same time with how the season is looking for the vikings they're sitting at one and four i don't see a world where they're going to rush justin jefferson back on top of the fact that he's visibly frustrated on the sidelines he's not happy with how this team is going he could very well just take his time and not come back super quick if they're not playing for a playoff spot and he's not in love with the team situation what's the point of risking an injury so that being said Justin Jefferson's targets are going to be dispersed between Osborne and Addison I don't think someone's going to completely take over the JJ role I think it'll just be split they did see identical usage in week five Addison is the long-term play here but he's not on the waivers anymore but KJ Osborne is a great ad if Justin Jefferson were to miss any kind of time even one week he's going to be a plug and play start for us the next guy that we want to be adding off the waivers is kenneth gainwell and this isn't really a plug and play must start kind of guy he's not going to be instantly starting for us but there's a couple interesting reasons why we need to pick him up eagles came out here in week five in a game against the rams that stayed closed the entirety of the way and this backfield was decently split deandre swift saw 49 percent of the snaps while kenneth gainwell saw 38 the reason i say he's not an instant start is because if anything he's more of a thorn in deandre swift's side than he is a viable start himself we knew the eagles wanted to run a committee type backfield since the jump of the season it's just been their identity for years now i know we all wish deandre swift was the clear workhorse running back because i mean especially after week two where he absolutely destroyed he's been looking very efficient and is decently better than Kenneth Gainwell. But that doesn't distract from the fact that they're pretty much splitting carries and the usage split outside of just the snap count isn't the best either. If you watch any of these Eagles games, you can probably tell that every single drive, if not every quarter, they switch out flopping between which running back they're going to use. They keep Kenneth Gainwell in for a drive, then the next time around they get DeAndre Swift. Swift is leading in routes out of the backfield and carries though. This just proves that if Kenneth Gainwell is coming out and seeing three targets out of the backfield and 10 carries a game already while Swift is healthy, if some unfortunate circumstance comes that Swift Swift gets injured he's going to be a clear workhorse league winning running back he's on one of the best offenses in the nfl and probably the best offensive line we saw what swift did in week two and there was no kenneth gainwell it's probably going to reciprocate the same way so if you're not looking to lock up a bench spot on a guy that has a really high ceiling but probably won't be startable unless an injury happens you probably won't be picking him up instantly but if you are a guy that has a pretty decent winning record on the season and you can afford using a bench spot on a high ceiling guy which i assume you should do unless you're in dire need these guys you should be adding onto your bench for the future of the season but if juba hubbard is not on your watch list it's about time to get him there and he's in a similar situation to kenneth gainwell but just a little better in week five we see chuba hubbard lead this backfield in snaps with 34 compared to miles sanders at 33 now that pretty much isn't even split but still the fact is that it's happening this is the second week in a row that this backfield has been split 50 50 completely and even before then it's 
it's been a decent split for the entirety of the season. But unlike Kenneth Gainwell, this is a situation where Chuba Hubbard's going to be a little bit more involved in the day-to-day, week-to-week situation. He's going to be involved in third downs. He's going to be involved in the goal line work a little bit. He's going to be involved in the two-minute drill, regardless of if Miles Sanders is injured or not. But that is the main reason why we need to be grabbing Chuba Hubbard in the first place. Because the main story to tell here is that Miles Sanders is clearly not 100%. He's been dealing with his groin injury for about two weeks. And if you look at his snap share, you can pretty much tell that this is a fact. And the real question here is Miles Sanders going to sit for a couple weeks and let his injury actually heal? Or is he going to play through it and possibly risk further aggravating the injury and making it a lot worse than it actually is? Or there's always the chance that he just plays through it and doesn't get injured. But Miles Sanders is at an actual real risk of further injury right now. He's been seeing less snaps because of it. He's still going onto the field, but he's way less efficient. And if Miles Sanders were to miss some time, just like DeAndre Swift, Chuba Hubbard is a must start locked and loaded player we need to be starting every single week, regardless of if the team is 0-5 and, and haven't won a game. Now, Sanders will still lead this backfield completely when he is healthy. I don't want you guys to mix this up just because of the usage right now, but he's proven to be another premium handcuff like Kenneth Gainwell, like Jalen Warren, like Tajay Spears, that will be top running backs every single week if their RB1 does get injured. So if you have an open bench spot to use and wait for those volcanoes waiting to erupt, most definitely add them, stash them on your bench. It's a lot more beneficial to stash running backs that might not have a whole bunch of value now, but have the potential for an insanely high ceiling than a guy like Brandon Cooks or Odell Beckham that don't really have that high of a ceiling, but are probably a bit more startable on the week to week basis. But speaking of Tajay Spears, another thing I really don't understand is how is this dude only rostered in 36% of leagues? That has to be a joke. It has to be the fact that people just don't want backup running backs on their roster because this dude is a premium ad. And I've talked about him in previous videos to the point where I thought I could stop talking about him, but apparently not because he's still available in over 50% of leagues. Again, I, I just don't understand. Derrick Henry comes out here and sees 60% of the snaps compared to Tajay Spears at 50. And for those of you guys wondering what the heck is going on, this math isn't mathing that equals 110. It's because they're both playing snaps at the same time on the field. But Spears is a guy that's been involved since the jump of the season. He saw 54% of the snaps in week one, which is pretty high for a rookie running back. And he led in routes run out of the backfield. Again, pretty impressive alongside Derrick Henry of all people. Now I want to preface this by saying Spears is never going to overtake Henry completely from the outside looking in, but it sure is looking close and he's owning the receiving game, which is going to give him a bit higher of a floor in general in PBR leagues. And he's seen the field a decent amount of time. And the reason he is such a good ad is because we've seen week in and week out when the Titans are losing games, they're utilizing Tajay Spears because they can't just run out the ball. They have to get more creative, but when they're up in games, they're just running it out with Henry and letting him do his thing to waste the clock. But Derrick Henry's closing in on 30 years old, which is very old for a running back getting that kind of usage. And we have to be realistic and know Derrick Henry's going to have up and down games depending on the game script from here on out. But Tajay Spears is probably one of the most premium running backs you can get off of the waivers right now because if the Titans were to suck for the rest of the season and not be in playoff contention, there's no reason they're going to keep trotting out 30-year-old Derrick Henry and not let their rookie running back completely unleash and go crazy and see what they have. With go crazy! Ah, 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 go stupid! Ah, go crazy! Ah. That is the real issue here. No, Tajay Spears isn't going to outwork Derrick Henry, but if we get later down the line of the season and they are nowhere near a playoff spot, you can believe that they're just going to sit Derrick Henry. But moving on to another guy we need to be adding off of the waiver wire, starting out with this tight end. And you've probably been hearing a decent amount of him recently, but take it from a Commanders fan, we have to be adding Logan Thomas. Besides the amazing week five matchup against the Bears, where he saw 11 targets and almost 80 yards and a touchdown, which is a season high for him. He's proven to be an actual real receiving option for Sam Howell and the Commanders. He's seen 25 five targets in four weeks because he missed pretty much two games with injury and that target share is top five amongst tight ends now the commanders did have to come out here and pass more than they usually do because they were down tremendously against the bears but even outside of that irregular pass volume in week five he's shown to be a decent safety blanket for sam howell that he's going to go to every week if he could manage to stay healthy throughout the entirety of the season he's going to be a viable low end tight end one and i know we've had a whole bunch of issues at the tight end positions with injuries and bye weeks so if you need to fill in for any of those he's a great guy to grab before it's too late now now you guys know I have to finish off this must add waiver video with defenses you need to be streaming every week. If you guys aren't familiar with streaming defenses, it's pretty much just grabbing a defense every single week that has a good matchup and switching and not staying with one defense every week and riding out their schedule because that usually isn't a great idea. So if you don't have a defense like the Cowboys or the 49ers, go through and stream defenses every week to find one with the best matchup that's going to get you the best points because doing that is going to outscore the defense that you just stick with the entire season through the tough matchups. But either way, the first defense we need to be adding is the Atlanta Falcons 
Falcons, which might come as a bit of a surprise, but they do get a good matchup against the Washington Commanders in week six. They've had their fair share of turnovers over the past couple weeks. And as a Commanders fan, it isn't a real game unless they fumble or throw an interception at least once. But the Falcons defense itself ranks pretty well in wide receiver and quarterback fantasy points allowed. And the Washington offensive line is pretty much non-existent. So there is a lot of opportunities for sacks as well. And I also want to look at the Dolphins defense to add this week. If you're talking about streaming defenses, they are the number one stream king of week six. They get probably the best matchup of the week facing the 0-5 Panthers. And this is such a great spot because we know the Dolphins offense is absolutely going to tear up, especially on top of the fact that the Panthers defense is bad. But this is going to create a very catch-up heavy, pass-heavy game script for the Panthers, which is going to cause more dropbacks, which means more possibilities for sacks. And Bryce Young is going to have to pass a lot, so that means more opportunities for interceptions and turnovers. But that is going to finish off this video of the top waiver wire ads for week six. If you guys have made it through to the end of this video, I seriously appreciate you, but make sure to stick around for tomorrow's video of the top waiver wire do not ads, waiver wire traps coming tomorrow. See you guys then.